and I know people prepare for their own food, but I, it just hurts my heart to think like, what if something happened and we didn't have food for Nolan? Yeah. up it is Shandis and Scott. Scott Robertson and today we are going to talk about something that's really important to us and something that I also think is going to be extremely helpful for you guys in light of all that is happening in the world Russia Ukraine we're looking at you it has brought up um I don't want to say concern or worry but it has stimulated some conversation for Scott and I about being prepared, right? Like Scott is really into emergency preparedness. And prior to having a child, we were, we knew we should prepare. But once you have a kid, like that need to prepare and that worry and that anxiety of something terrible happening is exponentially increased. So we're gonna give you guys five things that you can do or purchase in order to help yourself feel more prepared because it's really about controlling the controllables, right? Like we can't control what happens across the country, but we can control what happens in our home for the most part. Um, so we're gonna talk about emergency preparedness for your little kiddos today, okay? Yeah, I'd, I'd say also the, the big idea here is to, to not let some huge uncontrollable event somewhere else in the world or even in your area, but something you have no control over don't let that event um, control you. And by doing, and to do that, um, you just take uh, little steps, a little bit at a time, yeah. to get prepared for what for the things you can control. Exactly. Um, and so it's not about, oh no, I need to go out and buy all these things, everything yeah. today. It's like just don't panic buy. <laughs> don't don't go panic buy. We all we all know how that goes. Yeah. Goes. Um, no more toilet paper. But yeah, it's, it's just about sitting down, being calm. And thinking, thinking through, what do I need for for three days? If I if I couldn't get to the store for three days, what things would I would I need? And then once you're once you're ready for three days, then I'm getting ahead. Yeah, no, so. go, just go. Oh. So one of the mantras uh, I'd say in the emergency preparedness community is, when you're starting out, is just get prepared for three days. Whatever whatever it is that you're preparing for, whether it's you know, a hurricane or whatever, or if you have a, a little child, you're trying to, you know, make sure you have all the things you need for, just get three days worth of those things that you need. To start out. Just to start out. Like because just, it can be so overwhelming. Yes. Like, oh my God, in a catastrophe, what am I supposed to do? Start with three days. Yeah, start get with three, three days. Three days worth of stuff. And then once you we'll have- We'll talk about that step, what that step yeah. is. <laughs> and once you have three days, you have you kind of have an idea of what you need then you can scale that up to the next step which is three weeks worth yep. of whatever those items are yeah and from there if you have the resources or the means um, to do so you can go to three months and even and even more worth of three months worth of with the product or whatever it is that you need to get yeah um, so that you, feels obtainable like that feels yeah. controllable because for me it's like it's about controlling what I can control and then being intentional and methodical about my purchases pertaining to what Nolan would need if there was some sort of disaster, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's just a way also of just kind of controlling your own anxiety. Once you start doing these things, Ding. like <laughs> once you start doing, even once you get three days, you're like, oh, well, I feel a little bit better yeah. about all this. Like, yep. it's, Yeah. I mean, you, you can't control what's going on over where or, you know, anything else that's going on in the world, but you can control these things. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So number one, and I know this is obvious, you guys, but sometimes we just don't think about it. Diapers, okay? So think about how many diapers does my little person go through in a day, in a few days, in a week? And then you can calculate that out for how many you would need for three days, okay? Once you have three days, you can then, like Scott said, move to preparing for three weeks worth of diapers. And I know this is tricky because if your baby is like mine, you may be in a size two for a week and then in a size three for the next six months. I try to make sure he has enough for a few weeks for the size that he's in because he could grow out of that size any day. And then I try to make sure that next size up, I have a few months worth of diapers for that. Yeah, and I'd say that just a big thing with all these items really is just actually sitting down and calculate how many you need. Don't just go out and, oh, let's go buy four boxes. It's yeah. Like, actually, and if you want three weeks, figure out how many it is for three weeks. Yeah. Like if some, some babies 
three diapers a day, other babies maybe six diapers a day. Yeah, some babies and 10 or 12 a day. Yeah, so it really depends on where you are or where your baby is mm -hmm. um, in, their, in terms of their age and how many diapers they use. So actually do the work, sit down, and calculate it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you'll have what you need. And I've literally Googled how many diapers do you need per age, and there's a lot of charts and information out there where other people have already done the math based on your average. Here's how many diapers you should have, and that's how I purchased my diapers for three months and for the next three weeks. The same principle applies to baby wipes. The only difference is baby wipes don't come in sizes, right? And you sometimes you'll change their diaper and you'll use seven wipes because they had a blowout. Sometimes you'll use one wipe. So what I do is just make sure I always have at least two full boxes of wipes upstairs at all times. And then once those get done, I go and buy another one. Because what do you say? One is Two none. Two is one and one is none. Yeah. Two is one and one is none, that's, right? That's not mine. That's from the proper community. Uh, but Even yeah. still, it's a good principle to live yeah. by. So I always try to make sure I have two full boxes of wipes upstairs for him so that once that one runs out, I have at least one and then I go and replenish and get another one. And like, he's, like Scott was saying in the beginning, I'm not panic buying. I'm not buying 17 boxes of baby wipes. I'm buying one to replace the other one that I have so that I always have what I need for him on hand if I cannot get to the store in an emergency. And that's really what it's about. So number two is food. And my little guy is kind of 50% um, breast milk, 50% solids. So I have enough breast milk frozen in my freezer to last for three days. Since he's 50% solids, I also have enough solids for him to last him three days, and then we also have three weeks worth of solids for him. So depending on where your child is in their development, make sure you have enough for at least three days and then move to three weeks. And some of it could be frozen food, like if they love chicken nuggets, some of it could even be those little pouches, like my little guy loves those little fruit puree pouches, so I have enough of those for three days. He loves chicken noodle soup. And I just buy one or two cans when I go to the store. I'm not buying 15 cans of chicken noodle soup. Um, I just wanna make sure I have what I need. And the idea with, with food too, uh, in the emergency preparedness community, they talk about a working pantry. Oh yeah, yeah. Where once you, so you, you kind of, you stock up, you get you get your three weeks worth of food, but then once you have those three weeks, um, once you use one of those items, then you backfill that item. So you have a constantly, you're constantly cycling through your your stock of whatever your food item is. Yeah, yeah. And um, so obviously when you're doing this, make sure you're buying things that you're actually going to use. That's what I was going to say. Um, Only buy what you will eat. Yeah, don't. Because otherwise it just goes in the trash. Yeah, if no if one likes, if your baby doesn't like minestrone soup, don't go buy any yeah. minestrone soup. <laughs> Um, I don't like minestrone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This also this helps prevent panic buying, really, because you, you you get your three weeks, but then after that three weeks is built up, you just buy one every yeah. week, and you con and you constantly and you have that supply. Fill. You just backfill. I love that idea of a working pantry, and I know people prepare for their own food, but I it just hurts my heart to think like. What if something happened and we didn't have food for Nolan? Yeah. Because he's not 100% on solids yet. So I need to make sure there are foods that he can process safely and that he can eat. So those purees plus his breast milk. It's important to me to think beyond my own like, oh, I need toilet paper and hand sanitizer. I also need to make sure Nolan has diapers, right? Like he has things that where he can go to the bathroom and um, yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so number three, Really important, especially if you have a child um, that has specific needs, over-the-counter medication. And I'm gonna let Scott talk about this. Uh, yeah, over-the-counter medications have been getting a little more complicated recently. You know, um, even prior to all this, uh, you know, issue in, in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, um, just with supply chain issues, um, there's been various, just, uh, what's the word? shortages of yes. over-the-counter medications yeah. and also with all the geopolitics um, I've recently learned that a lot of the ingredients for over-the-counter medications actually come from countries like China and I think also some from, from India but primarily from from China but you know where we live in America China and America don't really have the greatest relations so if something happened there it could be a really big problem getting over-the-counter medications hmm. um, and you really don't need at least for most uses, you really don't need that much to have a couple months worth of 
ibuprofen. Yeah, for uh, your baby. For your baby. Or baby Tylenol. Um, yeah, because I think a lot of us, you know, think about, okay, well, I have Tylenol, I have, I have this and I have that, but do you have the child version yeah. or the baby version? Yeah, do you have the baby version enough to last? Um, to in case something happens with your kid, in case they get sick and you can't get to the store. Yeah, because I, I had our whole my whole little box full of all these medications. I was like, oh well, no one can't use any of these. Yeah, our little guy can't <laughs> use that full that adult so, whatever Tylenol. He needs yeah. a baby version. So something to think about. Yeah, something to think about. So number four, and again, you guys, if you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I already know all this stuff, then great, you're more prepared than I was. The next thing that I wanna talk about is clothing. So as adults, we pretty much are the size that we are. Maybe we gain five pounds, lose 10 pounds, but we know that kids grow at an exponential rate. My little guy is now in 18 month clothes. Two months from now, he will be in probably 2T or 24 month clothes, right? And so he will be out of those clothes in a few months. Whereas we adults, as we if there's a catastrophe or an emergency, we have clothes that we can wear and change into. We need to make sure we also have something for our little people to wear. So what I do is I always make sure I have a few pairs of pants, a few shirts, and a few sleepers in the next size up. So if he's in 18 month right now, I have a few pair of two tees, I have some t-shirts in two tees, and I have sleepers in two tees. So that if he outgrows those, and I can't get to the store or get whatever I need online, I already have those for him so that he can be comfortable. Because really, there's gonna be a lot of stress and a lot of panic happening if there is a catastrophe. If I can keep him as safe and fed and as comfortable as possible, that is the goal. So number five is non-essential regular use items. And these are items that you don't necessarily need, but they would be nice to have. We use these changing pads, these disposable changing pads for him. We lay it down, we change it when we're done, we throw it away. Do we need that for him? No, but it is nice to have and it's nice to travel with. We throw it in our bag and they're disposable so we can just put them in the garbage. Um, so think about what those items are in your own family. What items do your kids like to have or do you like to have for your kids, but they're not absolutely essential. And if you start purchasing those things now, little by little, if you need them, you have them fully available and you can just, live in your comfort while the world burns. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> you can be a little more comfortable in a crazy, disastrous world. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna add anything to that. Uh, yeah, I just, just gonna say, it really doesn't take much effort to start taking back some of that control, some of that, that fear. I love it. See why I married this guy? You just, you just start a little bit. Just start taking a little bit of control back a little bit of control back because when you focus on the things you can control, you, you don't worry as much about the things you can't control. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things that I really like about emergency preparedness. Yeah. So I can't control those things, but that I can control. Yeah. I can do something about that. And you can do something about it today. Yeah. Like right now. Like when you go grocery shopping, you just get an extra can of chicken noodle soup. It's a dollar. And I know everyone does not have extra money. Like for so long, I lived paycheck to paycheck, which is why I like this approach mm -hmm. because, okay, that's an 89 cent bag of whatever that my kid loves to eat. I can get one of those this time, you know, or that bag of diapers is on sale. It's $5.99. I'll go ahead and grab that extra bag of diapers so that I have what I need in case something happens to my baby. Um, yeah. Speaking of babies. Speaking of babies, I think he just woke he up. He just woke up. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you found any value in this um, video at all, please subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or how you prepare um, for emergencies um, or even what you found the most helpful. So go, oh, so go and be prepared. And as you prepare, make sure to think about your little ones. Thanks guys.